Welcome to the Belfry. So let's begin at the very entrance. So right as you come up from the elevator on your different endeavors and missions, you will be greeted by a pretty awesome looking loft. So let's begin with the left hand side. So first and foremost, we have this machine right here, which I think is probably something that Barbara Gordon would utilize in order to try to get her ability to walk again. And the reason why I say that is because if we do go on ahead and make our way upstairs, we can actually see that the Barbara Gordon of this world, at least at some point, most likely used a wheelchair. So we do see that it, they do make a reference to it, especially because of the color scheme here, the black and gold definitely fitting for Barbara herself. The reason why I'm being so specific with this machine is because I think a lot of people would probably think that this is the treadmill that Flash would use in order to go on ahead and exercise and work on his ability to control the speed force. Next, we're going to transition to the kitchen area. And there is a really heart touching tribute here to Bruce Wayne. We can see Bruce, Ace the Bat Hound, of course, and Alfred, all three right there as they were growing up, of course, or Bruce and I guess Ace were growing up and Alfred there. I think that's a really, really cool tribute. We plus also find out that the game is indeed taking place just like the famous Long Halloween storyline around the month of October. And if you have an appreciation for these photos, you probably will have an appreciation for the photos over here because we have some more photos of ace the bat hound but also some of the other members of the bat family so we can see of course a nice little cooking session between what seems like dick grayson and jason todd over there you can see jason and dick grayson fixing up a car what it looks like then you have this really cool photo of what looks like tim drake bruce wayne and Alfred, so that is definitely pretty cool. And then a nice little graduation photo up above that as well. And speaking of which, if we make our way a little bit higher onto the top of the refrigerator, you'll notice a really cool flaky cereal, and it says Boosterific. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck is this referring to? But if you don't know, that little machine right there is actually the same device that Booster Gold uses. So that's a cool little reference to Booster Gold existing in this world and being a huge celebrity just like he usually desires. And then the last thing over in the kitchen area is a cool reference to Wonder Woman because there's a Wonder Woman apron over in this little corner. So now that we're done with the kitchen area, by the way, there's a nice little shopping list that definitely has all of the ingredients for Poutine, which makes perfect sense considering the studio that developed this game is from Montreal, which is the capital of poutine making. But regardless, that's just a fun fact there. We're going to rotate on over to the opposite end where you can see a cool little training area featuring a very cool a Gotham Goliaths poster. But the more interesting thing is actually on these evidence boxes because we have some really cool stuff here. So first and foremost, there's a straight up reference to anarchy. Of course, as we go on ahead and make our way down, you can see Scarecrow featured, Harley Quinn, The Mob, Two-Face, Wayne Foundation, which is very intriguing. Then we have a few Oracle boxes, which of course refers to Barbara Gordon. Then we have Clayface. We have a Gordon box. We have a GCPD file box along with a Wayne Tech uh, folder. Then we have Mr. Freeze, Killer Croc, and the Freaks. So when we pivot away from the crates of evidence, there is a handful of awesome things to look at when we head to the main bat computer area, which is absolutely beautiful within the Belfry. First and foremost, if we take a look at a lot of different boxes around the Belfry, you'll notice a tag on them that says WB Montreal, of course, indicative of Warner Brothers Montreal, AKA the company that worked on making this game a reality. So that is obviously very cool. If we pivot our attention over to the uh, almost like 3D printing sort of area right here, you'll notice some really brilliant stuff like Bruce Wayne. And I think that is Tim Drake could be, I suppose, also Robin uh, Dick Grayson, I suppose, at that time, as well as a nice little Robin Rules post-it note over on the side of that Wayne Tech computer. But the coolest Easter egg in the entirety of the Bat computer area is probably the one over by the main computer, because if we zoom on in over here, you'll notice a brilliant, brilliant photo of Robin and Superboy. How freaking cool 
is that as we zoom out from the computer there's by the way the really cool tray that alfred is known for carrying and bringing some lovely tea some english breakfast tea i would imagine uh, that the rest of the map family gets to enjoy and we turn our heads around back towards the entrance we can make our way over to this side of the belfry where we have a beautiful tribute to bruce wayne himself where we see the surviving gauntlet that he had worn which is looking very very much battle damaged of course but looks brilliant then the absolutely gorgeous cowl which just looks magnificent and is just absolutely tremendously well detailed and then you have what i assume is part of his cape so when we're done with this we can turn on around and head towards the bat cycle area where we can see a brilliantly beautiful bat cycle ready to be upgraded and customized but as far as easter eggs are concerned there's a really cool easter egg here to the Graysons themselves, which we'll take a look at another one of those in a moment. But you can see a cool photo of the Grayson family right there. But then in addition to that, you have an entire circus image as well, the act that the Graysons were a part of. So I think that that's pretty cool to see also. When we make our way over to the other workbench here, you will also notice a really cool photo of what seems like probably Dick Grayson Robin and Red Hood Jason Todd, but I swear, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that also looks a lot like Speedy to me. The only thing that threw me off was the hat. The baseball cap being green kind of threw me off, but if it was red, I really genuinely think he looks a lot like Speedy. And now it is time to make our way up the stairs. So we're gonna head upstairs once more where there's a cool lounge area. We've previously obviously taken a look at some elements upstairs, like Barbara Gordon's wheelchair here, but Back to the Graysons we go, because over here in the lounge area, we can actually see the Haley's Circus, the Flying Graysons Act poster up on the wall, which is absolutely brilliant looking, looking pretty cool indeed. There's also the Spy Hunter game over here, which is obviously pretty awesome to see. And yes, it is actually playable. So you can go on ahead and play this if you'd like. Some of the other cool things around here is a poster for Black Canary. So how cool is that? The existence of yet another famous DC icon. And speaking of icons, if we take a look over on this shelf, I swear this has got to be an Easter egg for Indiana Jones. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the fedora is supposed to indicate a different character, but at least to me, it feels like it's probably a reference to Indiana Jones. The other thing that's interesting about all the books in this game is that they all seem to be inconspicuous or hard to decipher. Like you don't really know what these particular books could possibly be. With the exception of just a couple, including this one right here, which says the meaningful history of guerrilla warfare. Then of course you have the Pride and Prejudice book right here by Jane Austen. And I guess Bruce is such a big fan of this book that he actually has multiple copies out on the shelves. Another fun thing to spot is the fact that they do seem to have a swear jar right here, which is probably mostly being filled up by Red Hood, if the game is an indicator. And the last thing that I wanted to go on ahead and mention is first of all, they do have some type of a game console here, which honestly, the controllers almost look like the Google Stadia. So I guess if there was anybody that did buy Google Stadia, supposedly it was Bruce Wayne, maybe the entire company. In addition to that, by the way, how freaking cool is this? It does look like the Gotham Knights sometimes indulge in some Dungeons and Dragons. So that is pretty cool to see that they actually do play a bunch of board games, including possibly based on those D20 dice there, some Dungeons and Dragons. And so there you guys have it. That is the showcase of the Easter eggs within the Belfry itself. These are of course the areas where you would go on ahead and swap to your different playable characters. So if you're curious about that, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Let me know what your favorite Easter egg was. And I'll catch you guys here on the next one. Peace out. See you laters. Alligators. Alligators.